my, my group, my team has been working on displaying Arabic on the basis of uh, analyzing <coughs> actual manuscripts. <coughs> so instead of, <coughs> sorry, instead of um, trying to uh, reproduce uh, 15th century typographical techniques with digital means, we try to make a fresh start. Um, then the second thing, filing, which is what I just mentioned, Unicode, that is the format. And the third thing that is that we are trying now just as a, to toss up an idea, how we could apply these aspects for digitizing texts. Uh, now, displaying has, is based on, uh, on shape analysis and synthesis. And you can check on the, in, on the internet for, with these words, Mosaf, the Arabic word for Quran, and Mascat, the capital of Oman. The government of Oman commissioned to us to create a website that represents the Quran. And we, made, we gave it a special feature, a, a word shaping, where uh, a, a string of Arabic characters can be rendered according and varied according to various parameters like stretching, variation of the connections, rotating, uh, <coughs> rotating the dots, adding miniatures to those letters that have no points, the, and stretching the final uh, form. Uh, this is actually interactive. You can click on it and select. And if you select, um, the, um, all the other categories default from the chosen form and roll out the alternative possibilities according to that particular parameter. And there's also a way to get rid of all your changes by pressing an empty button and that resets to the standard. Um, so here, a, a quick close up of how it works. Uh, it's not really relevant to spend so much, too much time on these effects. It's the idea that it exists and that it's based on a, lo a lot of analysis of Arabic script. And I'm, I'm sure you guess <coughs> what I'm driving at. Um, so here's the reset button. And you can see enormous changes in, the, in every word on the page to accommodate for the new size of one word. So it's an enormously dynamic approach to script. And that is what you observe in manuscripts. And we, we summarize all, the, all our observations in a list of rules called script grammar. And <clears throat> for this particular project, we took a close look at uh, a delimited number of documents, the um, Ottoman tradition of writing the main uh, script for copying texts, Nasr. Oh, sorry, this really should show like this. This is the same page <coughs> of the Quran. Everyone is different and they're all the same. And the difference is the variation element. Uh, now, first, anybody who's familiar <coughs> with Arabic knows about the connecting rules, but they're a bit more co complicated or mo more interesting than what you're normally taught. Um, I'm taking an example of a, a font made by the uh, Summer School of, um, uh, Summer Institute for Linguistics at the bottom called Shahrazad, the Google Noto uh, uh, font based on the Cairo Quran 1924 and our own manuscript analysis of the same style. And you see <laughs> the single letter ba essentially looks the same. Um, but with script grammar <clears throat> or in a typographical approach or without script grammar, they start to become remarkably different. I transcribe these with simple Latin letters and this is where the concept archaigrapheme already come, uh, comes in. Without the dots, they are already relevant. Uh, a grapheme in phon a a phoneme in <coughs> phonology is a, string, is a bundle of distinctive features. If, if there's a group of phonemes that share the same uh, gr main group, and what remains by, by uh, uh, removing the distinctive feature is an archive phoneme. In the same sense, these can be equipped with any kind of dot pattern. Doesn't matter, the, the, the script grammar applies in the same way. So double identical, the B, has a certain form which they catch well in all varieties, but the typographical one tries to follow the script grammar and the, the bottom one doesn't even attempt to do that. They have a simple middle form. Now you get a fine detail that is lost on most font designers that a double group has this kind of a U shape. And here you see another fine detail that is no longer rendered even in the typographical approach. They use an the uneconomical use of the raised denticle. And so it, I can continue, Every, as, as, as I increase the number of Bs or denticles, <laughs> you get what I call a dissimulation pattern. So <laughs> the rule that is effective here in script grammar is dissimulation. You cannot read repetition of identical forms. We are not barcode readers. Um, and, the, and the early Arabic scribes were aware of that. So now I have, I have reached a group of eight denticles, which is a bit, of, a bit absurd as an example. But I haven't really pushed it too far because the, the word, I can find a word that has them. 
bitaspitaina, with our both uh, uh, cases of evidence. And this is what it would like, would, what it looks like in the most widely used Arabic typeface. But this is way far away, far away from what the actual actual practices in Arabic manuscripts. So now <laughs> that was just the basic shaping. Now extended shaping adds all these extra parameters that I showed uh, in the beginning. You can elongate. Uh, you get a water, <coughs> the raised denticles and, and the flattened denticles and the U-turn uh, denticles, they're all moved around if you start inserting elongations. This is not on the radar of any font designer or uh, uh, arabist, but it's the only way to get it realistic. And to show that it is realistic, I took Aya Surah 40, chapter 40, 40, verse 11, which has a high concentration of denticles, which is an, an effective, efficient way to, to spot the mechanism. Here you see the word ithnatain, with and without a final stretch. So uh, at the bottom I take a reference uh, a passage, and at the, at, the, sorry, at the top a reference, at the bottom I keep changing. You see, uh, at the bottom you see uh, a totally different constructions, but all within the rules of the Arabic script grammar. And all these scribes use the same pattern. And that, so it's a, it's a shaping protocol, and that's why I call it a grammar. And uh, I'm moving forward to one that I found exciting to discover because it behaved exactly the way had, we had already programmed it. <laughs> Here you see a form with an, <laughs> with an elongated and a penultimate form. And here you see one <clears throat> where there is no elongation. And the position of the denticle has moved, and uh, the raised denticle, and the position of the U-turned denticle has moved. And it, it is exactly as we have uh, prescribed it. And this is way out, out of uh, out off the radar of the Arabic Arabist. Now, how do, how do you build this sort of stuff? Now, <laughs> the ideal evidence is, is a minimal pair when you have from the same calligrapher, in this case, Kais <coughs> Zade, Hafiz Osman, who happens to be a pupil of Mustafa Izzet Effendi. And what is the relevance? The hand of Mustafa Izzet Effendi was, was, did, was, was turned into a metal font by an Armenian called Mohendisyan, who, whose, whose work became the standard for, for all Nasr typefaces in the industry. So this is very close to the main line uh, of, of the evolution. Now, this is identical. <laughs> this is the same page, the same line breaks, the same style, the same size. Everything is the same except the width of the page. And all, all of a sudden, <laughs> you, this exposes the mechanism in the brain of the scribes to, to, to play with these rules and you choose another one in order to adjust for the width. And here you see what, what this is. This is the word hell, jehennem, in the archigraphemic form without the dots. And this is just a selection of the forms that you get if you have it without or with one element of elongation. And I do this hands off because I prepared an animation. But you see, these, this, is, this is nominally the same information. And it is also in the same graphic style. It's all the Nasr style. And, and all the, the difference between all these manuscripts is, is controlled by this, essentially by this mechanism. I, and obvi obviously, <clears throat> you can see what, what I'm driving at. So I have, I think, 48, I caught 48 ones. It's not normal <coughs> to have more than one elongation, but if I would have added it to the string of Unicode characters, it would have exploded in a much bigger number. We can generate all these forms with an algorithm. So if you have the string, we can predict what you will probably get. And how realistic is this? It so looks absurd, but here is the word in a manuscript, and we were able to reproduce it by, man by navigating through this selection uh, mechanism. Here's another one. It's different, but we were able to generate it with this, manuscript, with this mechanism of the website. Another one. Another one. So I caught this for the same Unicode string. But then on eBay, I, <coughs> I discovered uh, something that I immediately added, identified as typically uh, a, a member of the corpus that I studied and the word that I was trying to use as a demo. So this shape I had never seen before, but it was, I was able to generate it with the mechanism, with the script grammar mechanism, uh, effectively. So 
actually I cheated a moment before because there was a doublet and the one that I found is here. You see they're all built at the, uh, from the same basic com component, components. Actually the typeface, the font behind it has only 300 glyphs. And so it's, it's like rules and, uh, rules and elements. Now filing. <laughs> this is another aspect, Unicode. The principle is that each, each functional shape gets a number and it's structured like a chessboard. And with the dark green elements, you should have been able to create an effective Arabic code uh, pattern with a couple of additional diacritics. But instead, uh, school teachers moved in and brought in all the, green, the light green ones, and political disputes and racial hatred moved in as well and created the additional ones for Urdu and Persian because they, these don't tolerate that they are actually using the same tradition. So they, they insist on having details with different numbers, although they're functionally identical. So for instance, there are multiple calves, there are mul multiple ways of doing ha, and <laughs> this creates ambiguity. And a nice way to show that is the word Mekia, which means or uh, somewhere uh, t pertaining to the town of Mecca, center of Islam, and everybody who writes this script has to do something with Islam. Now there are 40 ways of doing that, because there's one meme, but there are two ways of doing the calf, five ways, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, five ways of creating a passable letter, yeah, and, uh, and, and, and what have we, six ways of doing a, or four, four ways for a yeah and five ways for a half. So in color it looks like this, and here there's still <coughs> a difference between a raised and a descending ha, which functionally is identical but gets a different number. But if I change to the Nastalik typeface, where there is never a raised ha, <coughs> all the numbers, even if they're indicated as raising, cannot be expressed with raising their descending. And if you remove the color, the human eye cannot really distinguish anything because graphemically they're all the same. For our mental perception, this is all the same. So essentially, um, now for searching, this is a disaster. If you want to search for a word and, and type it in the wrong form, you need to do it like this. Try everything. And actually we made an algorithm, we call it brute force, that does this. It's ab extremely absurd and stupid, but this is the only way to handle Arabic text on the Unica on, on, when, you, when you want to search data. So now this is where archive graphemes come in. Essentially, this is what Unicode is. It is a typographically oriented way of encoding, and typography is, okay. Then I have the, this is the, the answer. Um, straighten it out and encode only what you see instead of encoding, encode all your political disputes. So now what's the relevance for OCR? That's the two minutes that are left. So the um, uh, conventional strategy for OCR in Arabic script uh, follows a typographic approach. Uh, lines of text are identified and then they're split it into words and then into characters. And of course this strategy has the problem that uh, characters cannot be easily segmented because the, of the lack of, of, of understanding of script grammar. And another problem is that logical spaces between words uh, don't match uh, physical spaces in, in Arabic script. And then uh, we have the problem that dots are not systematically placed in relation with the character uh, they mark, but they belong to a different layer, so they can be physically occupying the place of, of other characters. Ah, oh, see, this was there. Okay, now. So the, the strategy we propose is based on a, a, on a graphemic uh, analysis of script. Uh, we try to recognize letter blocks and we leave dot recognition for, for a following phase. Uh, th so this, this can be done later, uh, having an inventory for all possible instances of dotting by means of language models and, and statistical solutions. Uh, so this is the traditional workflow uh, Arabic OCR systems have. Uh, basically, segmentation and recognition are based on an alphabetical understanding of, of script. And uh, we propose uh, to segment and, and recognize letter blocks instead, following the real nature of Arabic script. And for this, of course, we need to have an inventory of the, the letter blocks available in Arabic script. So, so we took a corpus of Arabic, uh, split it into words, and reduced each word uh, into archigraphemic letter blocks. Um, so each word is basically a sequence of, of letter blocks. 
And on the other hand, uh, we built a mapping between each letter block and all its possible shapes uh, with dots within all words they can appear in. Um, and this, this, can, uh, this is what can serve us later to, to recognize the dots. And these are the numbers uh, we, we, we got. Uh, we compiled a corpus of 85 million words in Arabic and from it we got a number of uh, 53,000 letter blocks. Uh, we can now use this list uh, of letter blocks to expand them into all their possible shapes and train an OCR system uh, with this information. So. Who are you going to say? Oh, you can. Oh, okay. Well, just, just a final note. Uh, the, available, the availability of uh, script uh, models of Islamic scripts make it possible to generate any text from known information. So on the right you see a, a, a domesticated form of Arabic. On the left you see a wild form. The actual text is not Arabic at all, it's Urdu. And it's, the style is not Nasr, it's Nastalik. It's one of the most challenging forms of Arabic. We have models of it and now with this you, you can now create controlled environments for teaching uh, a script. So that's, that was the last image that I wanted to show. <laughs> Is that something that can also be instantiated through analysis of existing example text? In other words, to transfer the style automatically into the script, uh, the grammar parameters, and, and, and then be used to, to generate synthetic data that could then be used to train an OCR. That's, is that what you're doing, actually? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, my mic is too long, or? Uh, you can also. Oh, I can use this. OK. Wait. Yeah, basically you got it. Um, uh, you, you have already half bus. <coughs> so the middle line, the typographical Arabic that has more complications, could be used. You could use that to generate enormous amounts of 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 of, of, of controlled training text. I, I have one comment. The half bus is a reverse engineered uh, uh, open uh, uh, open type engine. The, the reverse engineering of the Microsoft open type engine, which is um, in its turn a uh, reverse engineering of the Deco type. Uh, smartphone technology, because we licensed it to them in the, in the early 1990s, and it became the, the proof of concept that it could be done. Um, but then you teach, if you use the half bus engine, for instance with the Ameri font, you teach it wrong script grammar, but there's a point of doing that, because there, there are tons, there's tons of computer texts out now with wrong script grammar. But if you want to use that kind of knowledge to analyze manuscripts, you run into problems <laughs> because the manuscripts follow a different protocol. And the, the, the structures, the, the smart, the smart uh, element of a font like Amiri is it approximates it, but it doesn't know all the rules on the one hand and doesn't have all the means on the other hand. Okay, your answer was Basically, yes. The answer is yes. You can, if you have, if you have a font that has lots of uh, things in it, uh, you can you can feed it any any corpus of data because and, and then teach it to read the data and, and then do a, a, a checksum at the end if you get in out uh, identically. I think that's an obvious way of working. <laughs> 